cooperate. What I can do is, like I said, I'll just turn it. Yeah. Um, and then after the show, if it still won't connect, I'll just. Uh, I already got you tagged, so it's going. Oh, be okay. Time cool. Anyway. And you know, we we were talking about iPhones. That XR is the one that's giving me the problem, but that Young Seven is um is in full cooperation yeah. mode. That's how mine is. And everybody, everybody can't wait to get to the eleven. So I'm, I'm not going it. no. So phone. him is paid for, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. So we, you know, it, it ain't no rent coming from behind this. Like I ain't missing no Christmas, man, none crazy, of that. Man. It's that's crazy, like. Man, phones be costing more than cars. That's crazy. Well, used cars, obviously, but, man. And they were just talking about they dropped the price. I said, if, look, if people got to go on payment plans to afford these yeah. phones, that should tell you that yeah. we need to do something different. It's ridiculous. What I do, because I get bored easily. I'm Sagittarius. I get bored easily. So what I just do is, like, when I get tired of this phone, I throw it away and get another one. Uh, no, I'm trying That's to the get cheapest way you. to do it. And my phone's going to cost no more. That's the cheapest way to do it. My, my phone don't cost me no more than, like, $300. Okay. Pay it on out. Keep it moving. Yeah. Um, so I was with Sprint for 15 years. We had a very good relationship, I think. Um, it's probably why it took me so long to leave. But then, you know, I left and went to T-Mobile and got my phone for free. Yeah. Because Sprint used to be great with that. I had AT&T for a while. Okay. AT&T got AT&T expensive. Um, Cause eighteen, no matter where I went, man, I had connection. I was good. That's the one thing about Sprint that I do miss. Um, Cause for the most part, I was always, you know, people would complain about drop calls and not getting any service, and I be walking around like, mm, maybe your phone's just cheap. Uh-huh. You live in the Chicago area. Um, I live in Woodridge. So technically, that is the Chicago yeah. area. But I don't want anybody commenting on my live or, or, or any live time I say, that is not nobody. Chicago. Oh. It's Chicago land. Right, it's Chicago ish. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's why I say Chicago right. land. So, land. Um, but I am, I am a Chicago native in real life. I've lived in several of the 606s. So, <laughs> born and raised. No, the only reason why I ask is because you being. Um, the leverage of women that you are we have i'm a part of a platform it's called global woman mm-hmm. and every month we have like these brunches and things like that where we come together mm-hmm. um, we network and we market our businesses okay. with other women but we do have global man it's not as popular yet as global woman is okay. but i do want to extend the offer for you to come in uh-huh. i can send you, you the, the information okay. send me the info uh-huh. yeah you'll love it send love me it. the info Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for tuning in to Fluent Radio. I am your host, Mr. Fluent himself, and I hope everyone is having a very, very productive and safe day. Uh, it has been a very, very, very great week for myself. I am rocking my North Carolina blues today. I like how you sound on here. And yeah, I got, I got, I got a little. That's like, some future stuff. Future stuff. You see how dark skin? You see how dark skin? See how we are? Boom! So futuristic. You feel me? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, before we get started. He needed back on. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Before we get started, y'all, yo, I have two free tickets to go see Carl Thomas and um and Aurora Native and, and uh, uh public public announcement. They're going to be at the entrance. Uh, Florida Radio will be in the building, and we are going to be doing interviews. Uh, but yeah, I am uh, actually, stay tuned for the end of the show. I'm going to give you the details on how you can win two free tickets, go see these legends, and, and yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. Um, I do have my lovely host here, Shante. Hi. She's over here. Like right now, y'all, she got, got a little hair lady, so that she figured. <laughs> see? A little, see what a little water do? Look at that. Look at that water. water. No. Water. 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 No. Oh, my water. goodness. It's not what water, water does. I'm sorry. Wrong direction. Juices and berries. Right. Juices and berries. <laughs> not juices and berries either. Juices and berries. Okay. <laughs> Same thing. Don't make them curl and stand up. You know better than yeah, that. Juices and berries. It's more like heat. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, I have a Thank very, you. very well. We have a very, very, very special guest in here today. I'm gonna let her introduce herself and all everything that she, me, all she coming with a full clip, bro, for, 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 for. So <laughs> go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, mom. All right, uh, Catherine well. McNeil, founder of CHBM Services LLC. So we um, 
We do affordable career development in layman's terms. It's resumes, LinkedIn profiles, uh, coaching, and all of that wonderful stuff. I am the founder of CHBM Services Development Program at L3C. With that entity, we do um, career development workshops and events for single moms, and it is free uh, for the participants. Whew. This is when you realize how much you do, right? I am also the founder of Single Mothers Navigating Parenting Careers and Entrepreneurship Incorporated, um, 503, 501c3 pending. We are a not-for-profit, and we provide um, support for single moms via career, um, career development. So I partner with myself on workshops. Um, we are gearing up to be able to help with back to school fees for moms with students in high school, um, college application fees, up to so many college applications, and we are offering scholarships for single moms that want to return to college or um, in- enter in a trade. And then lastly, <laughs> right, um, I am the author of A Mother's Love, 31 Days of Affirmations for Single Moms, and the author of um, Parenting is a Love Hate, Relationship, which is newly released. I just released that book in August, actually. Wow, you are like, yeah, uh huh. You, like <laughs> you sound like me. I'm up here like, I ain't even long winded because I did it. I know, it, like, when, when I go through the spill, I'm like, ooh, wait a minute. Ooh. Yeah, you, you got a lot going on. <laughs> you got a lot going on. That's what you got a lot. That's so, 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 so tell me, what was your process in writing your two books? So the first book was a complete another accident. Uh-huh. In all transparency, um, my I am a mother. I have three children. My first is nineteen. She'll be twenty in April. Um, I have a soon to be seventeen year old. She'll be seventeen in November. And then I have a three year old son. Uh-huh. Um, at the time that I wrote this book, my six she was sixteen. My nineteen year old was sixteen, um, and she was going through what we consider to be the traditional growing pains. You know, you're a teen, you're smelling yourself. Uh-huh. I'm, you know, a strict parent using the air quotes for the people that can't see me, because um, everybody else's parents were letting them do whatever they wanted to do. Right, right. So she went through her rebellious stage, and I realized that I didn't really have anybody to talk to about that. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to tell anybody because you feel like you're failing as a parent, right? And you don't want to be judged because the first thing we do is, well, if you were, you should be, there ain't no way my daughter would, right? Um, so as therapy for myself, while going through that change, I wrote down the feelings that I have. So inside of that book, there are days dedicated to not having enough resources as a mom. There are days um, dedicated to putting yourself first and um, prioritizing self-care. There are days that are dedicated um, to dad. I I don't mail bash, so there's no mail bashing there. I focus on it from a point of we have to be healthy for us and we still need to, you know, maintain those healthy relationships. In some cases, the healthy relationship is not to be bothered with them. But (laughs) at the same time, (laughs) you know what I mean? But at the same time, um, you know, we discuss that. So each day addresses like it, it has some type of weird title like it might be bills with the bills or something like that or um mother's day or something like that and each day ends in an affirmation to basically support moms to know like you're not alone you're not out on the mm-hmm. island by yourself and there's nothing that you're going through that no one else right. has gone through second book was a little bit of a different situation um Actually, it wasn't because this was not supposed to be my second book. I'm I'm writing an affirmation for single dads because okay. um, I thought that would be dope and it, that type of support is needed since dads get a real bad mm-hmm. rap. Uh-huh. I, um, however, I don't remember what it was that triggered me, but something triggered me to kind of dig into the the fact that again, like parenting is not all what you cream. see on TV. Girl, you um, want to throat chop them, body slam them. Exactly. Come here, let me hug you. I ain't mean to do it that hard. And, no, I meant mean, to every, 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 right. every, every and I And I don't feel bad about it. Now, yeah. stop crying. No, um, every choke. That's I why meant, I say I ain't mean every, to do it that hard. Every choke, yeah. every kick, every, every, every with the belt. I mean, get away every, from me. It was, I love, though. It was I love. <laughs> so, I figured I would kind of approach this from a different standpoint because... I focus on career development, and that's my thing, and then I focus on the whole single parenting thing. I thought it might be a good opportunity to kind of bridge the two because the tagline is seven ways to keep your sanity while being a great leader in your home. Mm. Um, With the violence 
in our neighborhoods, with the violence in our community as a whole. I'm not saying it's parents' fault, but we do play a part in this. Oh, yes. So I would speak to seven things that I've learned as a parent that I absolutely have to do in order for me to maintain some type of order mm-hmm. in my home. Right. Um, yeah, because cause, cause like you were saying, like, parenting has changed so much. Um, see, I'm 40, and parenting has changed so much since I was, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't whoop your, chi- your kids. I, I don't want to make it sound like, I'm going to tell you something, everybody. I, I, I don't want y'all to make it sound like I just beat my kids. No, no, no. But it has changed so much, you know. Um, you can't do certain things. You mm-hmm. can't say certain things. And, uh, it, it's, it, it's, 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 be- I wasn't gonna say anything. I was gonna <laughs> let them finish. Re- reason, say who? Cause we in my house and I pay these bills. Re- reason, re- reason, reason for being is because like you know, cause some of us are kind of actually like it's different that know the law. It's like okay, yeah. so if you if you are physically restraining a child, like she can he or she can sue you. Like I know that, and I teach my crazy. children that, and I tell them, go on, do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's why I say it's, it's, it's that crazy because care. my mom, my mama, it didn't have all these things when when my, when I was being raised. No, nah, we ain't had that. It was it, it was we like that. It's like, it's like, I got then. hit because the whole hit. block was gonna kick your butt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because it, it because, and we knew what DCFS was. Mm-hmm. You you couldn't like it, it was times that like like you like. It wasn't a choice to go to school. Like, like yeah. it, you had to go to school. It, that was it. It yeah. wasn't no, uh, no. I'm not feeling good. I need, I a, had, mental, I I need was, a mental health yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I was Me too. sick. Yeah. I was sick. And, <laughs> go to school so I can't have my mental health day. Seriously, seriously, be, be having the measles or or, or pick the <laughs> You still going to school. My mama rubbed that home. calamine lotion on you yep, and said, you still going to mold. school. Uh-huh. And you better not get anybody else sick. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's your fault. Like, it's your fault. Like, like seriously, like, you know how you used to blame the teacher all the time? And my, and my, no, my mom didn't play none of that stuff. Like, mm-hmm. none of that. Because she knew her child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to know child. your child. I mean, and you know part of knowing your child is knowing who you were as a child. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, and now it's, it, it, it's, it's gotten, like, I'm sorry, anything that wasn't stapled down, my mama hit me with. It was fair game. Uh, Listen, it's still um, fair game. If she could lift the couch, I, <laughs> if she could have lifted the couch or the lazy boy, I probably wouldn't be here right now. But there's a flip side to that, uh-huh. right? And I adhere to this. I, my girls will tell you that they've been bow tied and they be elbowed <laughs> and the whole nine yards. Um, but something that I learned, one, I wasn't a bad child. Um, but I got my fair share of butt whoopings. Um, and my grandmother, may she rest in peace, um, was abusive mm-hmm. by all standards. Because the, you can go overboard. Oh, I, yeah, I've yeah. had to catch myself um, in moments. Like, you're just, you're hurt first. Mm-hmm. And it comes out in anger. Yep. And then and you may be able to do something mm-hmm. that you may ultimately regret. And children get used to getting hit. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then they know that that's what's coming behind whatever, you they know, did. like the issue is. And they're like, okay, I'm going to take this whooping and I'm gone. And uh-huh. I'm going to be as done and over with. So, um, you know, kind of paying attention to how I grew up when I hear the stories from my mom and her siblings, you know, and things along those lines. I was like, okay, there are instances where you you should kick your child in the forehead um not literally like not right. literally um but there are instances where you do have to put your hands on him uh them like it, they're far few and in between right more often than not there are more creative ways to get your point across oh yes, right. So. yes. especially with these days technology is is wow you take it away Mm. And we we've done that, mm. and folks were in the house going. I, I mm-hmm. cut the Wi Fi off. Yeah. I cut the electricity yeah. off in one of my I kids' rooms. I know my punishment was gonna be um, this long. I ain't know you was gonna keep getting in trouble that long. Man, change the Wi Fi code. Yeah. I've do done that. it all. Shut, shut, shut everything down. Done it all. Do Just give me change your phone. The, you can't the, have nothing that's got it that connect to a Wi Fi. Give it to me. My daughter, at the time, that sixteen year old, the heifer found her phone. Mm found it oh, yeah, i had turned that. her phone off just in case but you know with cell phones if you can connect the wi-fi you, you can could. still use it right so she was good uh-huh. 
She was good. I, I really did try to kill him and hand that one. Once I'm going to go get my phone, turn it yeah. on, boom, yeah. boom, 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 Yeah, boom, 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 My children did that, too, at one point. And I was like, so y'all think it's okay to walk in my room? Without and that's passing? exactly where I was, huh? yeah. Excuse me? I didn't have that privilege. I changed the door. I, I put locks on my doors. And I told him, I, I shouldn't have to put a lock on my door in my own house. But I don't trust you. Yeah, and, and that's a different conversation. Uh-huh. And and that's something that I'm big on too. Like you know, if by chance I have to beat you, like even with my three year old, because I had to drive all the way out south on him one day because he was tripping because he wasn't at home. And at three, he fully un- understood because I said, "Do you know why I'm here? Do you know what happened?" You sound like me and my ten month old today. I told him no. He started swinging. I said, "You keep swinging at me." You got to break those habits. <laughs> like I've learned, children they know what they're doing. They get it. Yeah, they smarter right than we are. Right in the throat. Dictionary. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you going to catch B, all these words B, today. B, all of them. Uh, B, B, right in the store. You know, they be, you know, because my kids don't do all the right stuff. Right in the do. store. Or, I, or, or right in the store. I know the number. Knock some sense into it. Right, knock some sense into it. And if you right, see, you get them in the throat. You get them in the throat. See, they can't, they can't. But they can't uh, even respond because they're no. not focusing anymore, right? right? right. <laughs> <laughs> they like this and they like, ah, and they can't mm-hmm. cry real loud. I so did it one time. My mom, my baby was like, after she caught it, she's yeah. like, you really hit me. Mm-hmm. I told you, keep playing with me. It's either that or I just drive all of us off the cliff together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-uh, I ain't going. Nope. I'm jumping out the car. Y'all going on y'all. Oh, I ain't going. Bring I ain't going. I'm back. talking about your nephew. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about your nephew. Bring back said it, and I believe it. Bring back said it, and I believe it. Hit him in the stomach or the throat. Yes, I believe it. You so. got to hit him so hard, the teeth clip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I got to take you to the dentist. Make you think now about it. Now I got to take you to the dentist. Get all this numb. Yeah. Chris Rock, which one of y'all kicked me? Absolutely. Seriously, so now, now like we were, we were talking before uh, we got on air, and we were just kind of, you know, brushing up against, like, you know, um, how we are so, we kind of like our own worst enemy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, like you like you were saying, um, with, with, your, with your businesses, you, you, you do help people do resumes and, and things like that. And, and, like, what is your biggest struggle as far as trying to educate someone? It's your biggest man. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we, we, yeah, yeah. She, she thinking, not thinking. No, she not. She gonna. <laughs> she like. Which one do I really say? So, um, <laughs> let me tell a story. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Cool, cool. You cool. already got two books. It's about <laughs> Come on. Let me tell a story. Um, so because of what I do, and I used to work in the Austin community. Um. I ran a, a career development program um, for a center called the Peace Point of Youth Center. It's still there, but it operates a little differently than it did when we were there. And at that time, I used to work with the reentry population, um, so young men between the ages of 18 and 30 um, that had, you know, either just got out of jail or had been to jail. They were having, they were trying to overcome some type of hurdles with employment. Right. Um, so I've seen both sides of this struggle and this um, attitude Mm -hmm. that we have. One, we know what we know, and you're not going to tell us anything different than what we know. Right. If, you know, 38 people from the block did it this way and it worked for them, who are you? To tell me something different. Right? So the first first issue was I had to establish some type of credibility because they look at me, I have two degrees, I'm well-spoken, and I seem like I have it all together. Mm-hmm. You know, like, they don't know that, like, at 14, my brother was one of the biggest drug dealers on the south side of Chicago, and he got shot in the head. Mm-hmm. They don't know that I used to game. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. they don't they know. know they, they don't know these things. Um, And I have probably been in almost every type of scenario you could possibly imagine, either as a participant or victim or somebody that I know that was really close to me was a participant or a victim. So I'm not new to this. Right. So, we had to have that conversation first, because this is your job, this is what you get paid to do, you don't care about me, you can't understand my struggle. Girl, so, once we get it past again. that conversation, um, then it's, okay, but I've tried. Okay, try so try again. again. <laughs> Tell me what you did, right? Or, won't nobody help me? 
Why am I what here? am I doing? Like, <laughs> why am I here? What is your definition of help? Mm-hmm. Because someone giving you anything is it's not help. helping it's you. That's a definition. Yep. And something that I've learned with not for profits, not knocking not for profits, I have one, but it's something that I do different. We get people in the position um, so that we can feed those numbers and keep getting that funding, mm-hmm. but we don't teach people how to sustain and how to function in those positions. You can get me a job, but if I don't know anything about work etiquette, you know, if I don't understand basic concepts of if you're not 15 minutes early, then you're already late, late, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or that I can't have a conversation with you the way I have a conversation with my homie. There is inappropriate behavior and dialogue in the workplace. Um, Or that I can't come in here looking like I just rolled out. Just little stuff like that. So then that's next. Now I got to undo everything that you've known to be normal because we all know someone that did it this way and, and was successful. Right. Well, why I got to go to school? You don't, like, in real life, but these are your <laughs> options. Right. Um, you do have to graduate from high school or get a GED. Now, that one, you're not getting around. The way that the workforce has gone now, you at least need a bachelor's degree to make $30,000 a year. Mm-hmm. That's not going to get any easier. And that's just sweeping the broom. And that's just sweeping the broom. Mm-hmm. But the flip side of that is there are trades. Yep. You know what I mean? So you can go to the military, you can go into trades, you can go to school, or you can start your own business. Boom. Those are your four options. Mm-hmm. That's it. You start your own business in some way, shape, fashion, or form, you are going to have to acquire some type of education. It might not be a formal degree, but you're going to sit in on seminars. You have to, you know, workshop. learn from somebody, sit in the workshop, sit up under someone. There is a learning component to anything that you do. You go into the trades. There is an apprenticeship program. Like, you're going to have to study for a certain period of time. So, mm-hmm. you got to learn something. Pick your poison. Because uh-huh. college is not for everyone. Right. I completely support that. You go into the military. There's still a learning component from that. So, you know, you one of these four or you can go to jail or you can die like I, or, so there are two other <laughs> options too i don't necessarily know that you want to operate in those so then we go down that road that's a a struggle well the workforce don't support the black man here we go the man got his foot on my neck there uh-huh. we go so take it off i don't i don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look wait right. she made me lose my headphones exactly like like it ain't everybody else so oh. Like, like we understand the system, but at the end of the day, come on, man, come on. But, but you said it right. It's like, but it's it's an ongoing. It's not like you get a group, and it's ongoing. You teach this group, and then they go and they're doing their thing, and then you get another group that thinks the same way, but it's worse, and mm-hmm. then it's so on and so on. I always look at whether whatever you want to do. I always look at it as like like you're learning to drive. Eventually, you learn how to drive. You get your license. AKA your GED, your what you call yeah. it, your yeah. whatever license. your accreditation your, your is. Yeah. Yeah. You got your, you pass. Get your license, and then once you get out there in traffic, eventually you're going to have to ask someone, "Can I get over?" Yep. Because that Can was nope. Like, we're like, self-made. <laughs> everybody's self-made. See, see, those are the drivers that they make it to the destination, but you probably got into three accidents before you got there. Mm-hmm. And, and and and, and, there, and, and there's no there's no a, a time limit on how long you have to stay at the accident to make sure everybody's fine. So I look at just even whether what I'm doing or whoever who is doing it's like it's like you're driving the car, you're in traffic, and you get from one destination to the other. Eventually, you're gonna have to ask somebody for some help. Anything that over? you do, you need. We somebody all need help. help. Can I get over? Thank you. Can I? Yeah. Thank you. Like thank. You. Like you're gonna have to do that. That's just what it is. And we and we have to put that into perspective because we culturally and mm-hmm. I included do not like to feel like I'm dependent on anyone. Mm-hmm. That is not a problem. Mm-hmm. You just have to understand and put things in perspective. Okay, the man got his foot on your neck, that's fine. Right now the man got the job. So at the moment Go to that man and get that job. Go to the man and get that around. job. Obtain all the knowledge that you can from that man. Yep. And then you beat him at his own game. Mm-hmm. Stepping stones. Everyone has a ceiling. Everyone has a ceiling. Some people are comfortable with what they're doing. That's cool. There's no shade. If you're comfortable with what you're doing, me, I, once I reach my ceiling, that means I've learned all I can learn. 
Yeah, now I have to like figure out how to break like, the next next? and get to the next. Yep. yep. That's just been my mentality for like the longest. Like you, you only can get taught so much. Some people just need, like you need to concentrate on your circles. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you do. That's okay. Every level. Every level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. And, and that's why you, you what you was just saying, you was like they look at you like like you ain't been in their shoes. Wait a minute. Do not let the two degrees that's on the wall. Or however will my I position. Because I can yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, don't let, you know, because my, my hair is done and I'm, don't let none of that fool you. I said, because I've been in the same, you know what I'm saying? We all have a you story. Know, you know, every, everybody has a testimony, so to speak. Everybody does. It's how you get through them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and and I applaud you, man, for everything that you're doing. Especially, you done wrote a book, book for, for women and men. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I need to read the man book ASAP. <laughs> the man. Book. Look, parenting is rough. Yeah. And um, I don't think we give parents enough credit, and they're definitely not supported the way that they should be. Because, and I say that from a place of why I even wrote the books. Transparency is key. Do you know how many parents would may have been able to save their children uh-huh. if somebody would have just Talk to them, Talk to them and, and let them know, oh, I went through this with your brother. Or I went through this with your cousin or whatever, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So this is what you do. Now, there is no one size fit all, right? right. Every single kid is, is different. But there are some things, the women that end up with postpartum depression after they have children. Who talked about that in the community until people started killing their kids? Uh-huh. So you got to know. That nobody wants to address a frustrated, exhausted, or tired mother with a 16-year-old, with a 10-year-old, with a toddler, or with a 28-year-old, whatever the case may be. No one wants to have these conversations because that's your responsibility. You signed up to be a mama, so deal with it. Right. And I realize, and it's all of our responsibility because you got to interact with them same type of people that's in the streets with you. If I fail, <laughs> you going to feel it. <laughs> okay, yep. okay, let me ask you a question because you are... Uh, I mean, by, by every sense of the word, you are a teacher, educator, and you are a mom. Is there any time to where it, it, things like kind of over, like overlap? Like, oh. like it, it, I drive it, my hard, kids crazy. Is it hard, yeah, is it hard to like kind of like okay, I turn this switch off, I got to turn this on, turn this switch off, and turn this on? Like, so the the funny thing about that is, um, it's like a yes and no, mm-hmm. right? And it's kind of why I blend. Mm-hmm. Everything from the from the writing standpoint. I am who I am, and every hat that I wear plays into Catherine wow. as a whole person. Yep. I I have a very good relationship with my daughters, so they'll tell me, "Ma, I need you to take the the um, professional hat right. off. Your work hat off. Ma. I didn't need you to listen to me. Um, I didn't need you to listen to me. I ain't." Don't go into counseling mode because I'm an <laughs> IO psychologist by trade, right? So it's a natural, like, that's why I went down that road because it's just natural to me. Right. So when I'm at home, my kids tell me who they need to talk to <laughs> yep. so I can figure out how to be. And I learned through failed relationships. Like, you can't run your relationship like you run your business. You got to know how to pivot and you got to be present when you come home. And, and now that is something because of the fact that I am the everything for every entity that I have, I'm still struggling with the turning it off. I got to put the phone down. Um, but outside of that, I think I've been doing it so long that it's just kind of like, oh, wait, I'm dealing with my kids. <laughs> uh-huh. So they have voiced that that's not what they need from me right now. So let me go sit that Catherine in the corner Mm -hmm. right i'm at work when i'm at work i'm like i don't even talk about this stuff there's very few people that i work with unless i rock with them for real they know anything about my books my businesses or you know because what i do there again is a completely different vein i'm in Mm -hmm. leadership development this is a facet um but not necessarily in the workplace so i'm i'm intentional i'm not um co-mingling um there, there are opportunities where my career development expertise is leveraged, mm-hmm. and I, and I walk in that vein accordingly. But it's like when you just gotta know your audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. You just gotta know your audience. That's true. And speaking of relationships, 
<laughs> Did we speak of relationships? <laughs> You said relationships. Oh, and, 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 I don't remember mentioning that word, but okay, no, no, we're gonna no, go with this. Hey, I mean, we all need Black water. Twist. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody started drinking. Said, like when she said, even with your relationship, you gotta learn when to turn off, turn the hand off. She said, yeah. plot twist. You dog on right. Yeah. Like I said, we all needed some water. So. Now, the last. We got the first part out of the way. The last, the last uh, person that was on here uh, last week. The moment we start talking about relationships and stuff, she she hit me on my head and she was like, "Thank you very much, Mr. Evans." I said, "What what, what happened? What's wrong?" She said, "I have now got people in my DM trying to." <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you now. <laughs> I got, I got if you people. already on my page, don't do it. <laughs> Seriously, she said, "I got people in my yeah. DM." She said, people "It ain't going have, well." She said, "People have Googled her, all kinds of stuff, and like, because I guess I turned into Doctor Love. You know, my mom oh, was wow. Doctor Love, I guess." <laughs> And I wasn't even trying to do Why all that. Why did he say this it, last it just, week? It's just what it was. I don't know him. It's just what it was. It's just what it was. I don't know him. Are you single? No. Okay. All right. See, man, she said that quick. Because it, it, it ain't going to be no misunderstandings. It ain't no explanations going to be getting, given. That's it. <laughs> like, Listen, girls don't mean me. And I'm happy. My friend, <laughs> just there. No, like, no. And I'm happy. I ain't looking for no part-time. In between time, I don't need no backups, no sugar daddies. I don't need no Sorry, friends. Nothing. I don't need no side Lord, pieces. I need somebody to talk to. No, no. none of that. Buy the book on my page or pay me for one of my services. Outside of that, you we ain't got nothing to talk about. <laughs> I mean, you know, because some people like I've been in long term relationships. Right, she probably haven't so, dated. So, so that's but unfortunately, I have dated too. Well, 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 basically, like you could actually be like, let's say, for my age, like I didn't date many people. So, so, so I could honestly say, okay, well, I, I, I'm not really. really I'm just gonna blame it on the mucus in my head right now. Okay, so no, 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 I you got you. So you light skinned. That, that, that's exactly why you can't mm-hmm. comprehend. No, right you, now. you can't even get past a movie date. <laughs> right, right. Now, no, no, because you, it, because if you stink, no, I can't mm-hmm. get past a movie no. date. This no, it's the foolishness. It's not happening. See, you got her drinking it's, the water. It's not happening. Yo, hey, hey, she stank, and no, it's not happening. I'm not going to even go finish the movie. No, no they left the movie early. Yes. He couldn't get through the movie, and he up here talking about some date and Dr. Mm-hmm. Love. Well, I can't necessarily. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I am sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Not things only, are different. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Things think things are 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 very different. Um, I've been in two long term relationships, and then everything goes in between. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, I'm, I might have been around the block a couple of times. Don't nobody comment on on nothing because I'm gonna hurt your feelings. <laughs> um, and and um, things are are different. There are a lot of good people. And there are a lot of broken people, too. Mm-hmm. And you seem to run into the broken, broken people, people more than the good people because the good people have got to the point where they're not trying to be broken because they just keep running into... The broken people, the people that need them. And re- relationships is, is something that's near and dear to me as a whole. Hence why I write books about parenting. Hence why I do what I do like for single moms because we have to heal. A, uh-huh. Everyone has been through something that has caused them some type of trauma. Yeah. At some point, you have to own that trauma, and you have to start making the steps to heal yeah. from that trauma. We won't blame everybody else. Well, had my baby daddy not been a bum, then, okay, well... We know he was a bum. What you doing now? Yeah, you know, in that 1% people. chance that he completely flipped the script or, or she, because I know some bum baby mamas too. Mm-hmm. Um, if, you know, like, if if the if, if it's that 1% chance that they turn into somebody completely different and you never saw any red flags, right? right. right. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so you were Stevie Wonder, you ain't never I seen nothing, they ain't never right. showed you nothing. Um, <laughs> that's that, that special case. Mm-hmm. More often than not, because we're whipped 
oh, we want to be in love and we mm-hmm. want this person to be whomever, we make them who we want them to be. To be. And then when you start getting to the point, you know, typically when they piss you off the first time, um, and, and, and you start to see clearly, then I can't believe it. On the fact that you made a bad decision and gone, yeah. don't do that again. Right. We have unrealistic standards. If, if I told y'all what my old, you know, my list, mm-hmm. it was something else. Mm-hmm. And then I met him. I actually met and I dated him. Mm-hmm. And it was a miserable situation. Y'all listen to this, please. Um, because I was, you know, focused on, you know, he was educated, he could dress, he was fine, he could dance, he could sing, he, like, owned half the city of Chicago, he was whomever, mm-hmm. right? What, whatever these things were that were on my checklist. Um, and he's a great person, so I'm not saying that. But he wasn't right for me. Because I then realized that the things that would actually make me happy and what I really needed in my life, he couldn't give me. Mm -hmm. Because he was a businessman. Well, well. And, you know, women stay with the, I need my man too. Baby, there's a sacrifice that that, that comes along Mm -hmm. with that that truly accomplished and that truly driven guy. Everybody should have goals. This is not what... Everybody should have goals and should be driving towards something. But there's different levels of ambition. And there's different levels of what we um, consider to be successful. And he was about his business. Like, I love him. He's dope. But from a relationship standpoint, we would have never worked. I cheated on him. And I ain't even no cheater. Like, I'm not going to lie. Because I would have been... I would have been lonely. I would have dressed well, lived well, you know, drove well... Um, but all I, the stuff that the, all the stuff that don't cost you any money, you like to. That's what she needed. And it's, it's the in, the intangible things that mm-hmm. drive me. Sure, I want you to be able to take care of me. Um, what does that mean for me? It looks different than because clearly I'm driven, so I'm gonna have my own money. Mm-hmm. Um, I want my man to be a man. What my definition of that is, and my man is clear on what my definition of that is, and we're good there. So it it looks different for everyone, but you got to figure out you first. Uh-huh. Because had I not gone through what I went through before, who I'm with now would have never stood a chance. Right. And I can say that emphatically. Like I, <laughs> you want <know> what? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, get out of my face. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but because of the fact that I've had the experiences that I had at that time, I was at a different place and I knew what was important to me. And he caters to every single thing that is important to me. Is he perfect? Absolutely not. Like I hit the, hit the bell with that one. Mm -hmm. Like absolutely not, but he's perfect for me. Right. Right. And that's only because I know who Catherine is. Like we've had a long talk. Um, and we've come to some agreements, so we're on the same page. Right. If you don't know who you are and like really, what really makes you tick, what you're trying to do, if the person can support you with what you're trying to do, um, if it's going to constantly be a competition or what, you know, if they like kids or they don't like kids, like it's, it's a lot to go into that. Mm-hmm. And we want to, to meet and lock eyes. And feel that it factor and get that spark, <laughs> right? And then, you know, in 90 days, we're getting married. But I ain't slept with you yet because I got the 90-day rule. So, uh-huh. you know, That's scary. we're, we're going to get married. And I ain't going to know nothing about you. Unless, of course, we speedball the 90 days. And now I done met your mama, your daddy, and everybody else, which is dangerous in and of itself. Um, and whoever your representative is and, and, yeah. and, and all that wonderful stuff. Like, it, it's a lot. We got to... We got to focus on self and and heal and be honest with self and be okay with being alone. That's exactly that's exactly what I did. I, I, with your now, own demons. R- right, because, like, you have to, like, you have to heal. Like, especially if it was a bad relationship, like, you have to heal. Healing you got to heal in a good he, relationship, too. Well, I mean, I mean that, too. Yeah. But, but it's, it's mainly bad relationships because, like, you have to, like, depending on why you broke up, how you broke up, Cheating, blah 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 blah. You call him in bed with just as whatever the case is. You all of the heal. extreme stuff. Yeah. All the extreme mm-hmm. stuff that that's actually is going to take a piece of you. Just to go take a piece away from you. Yeah. The stuff that's going to actually it's going to be 
more of longevity. It's, it's going to last. And well, that's one thing I thought. I, I, I was like with Dayton. I was like, I'm going to just stop having expectations, especially after my, my little trauma. <laughs> I said, I'm going to stop having expectations. You're not supposed to like, be having like, expectations. I, 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 but you are to a certain to extent. extent. To a certain extent. To a certain extent, You know yes. what you are going Those to Those are boundaries. Right. Yes. You, right. You Those know what boundaries. you are going to put up with. You are know it. Like, if there's anything. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Well, like it has, it to, has be, to be something. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You got to put up with something, especially if you want somebody to put up with you. And I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm sorry. And, and if we can't even get past the movie date. And 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 and, and something's filed. Yeah. No, no. Ain't, ain't, and see, see, everybody feel. See, everybody just feels so sorry for the person. Say, okay, well, I guess I'll do a second date. No. If if it's not working on the first date, then why are you doing the second we, date? We shouldn't even mm-hmm. waste each other time. Even, yeah, because because yeah. you can't get that back. I don't care if it's five minutes. You can't get that back. But uh, I, I, sometimes I I feel like the pieces that we lose in relationships of ourselves and the time that we give or dedicate to in relationships, people want to get those things back. And it's like, why? You gave it out for a purpose. It's not for you to have anymore. Like, why are you still holding on to the person that you were five or ten minutes ago or the person that you were in that relationship, the time that you spent in that relationship? That time was spent, that energy was given for a purpose. Let that go. And you actually took something away from it because you learned. Right. So everything that you did give out, you gained something in perspective, so to speak, and perception too, because perspective and perception are two different things. And people want to, I just want to be back to me. Well, me is different now. Mm -hmm. Take who me is, embrace me, and go forward. Like, because I'm sorry, because I'm sorry. Me, me, me personally, (laughs) I'm, 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 you know, I can only speak from my perspective because I can't speak from every man's perspective. Yes, I do right. open doors. I do just I do bring flowers just because things are the same thing that you got her. That's the same thing that's gonna keep her. And that is the truth. And you, you know still gotta saying? level up. All that stuff. Yeah, you, yeah. Because after a while, but that's after for both men gets, and women. Because yeah, you know, it gets yeah. sour. Because after a while, after a while, it's 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 it start to become a routine. Yep. You don't want that a routine in a relationship would kill it too. Yeah. You don't want that either. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been enough like. I've probably been in maybe two long-term relationships, and I have learned so much about me, mm-hmm. not so much about the person. I've learned so much about me. Yep. And I'm like, man, like, okay, Melvin, you can't do this. Okay, Melvin, you can do this, and you can do this, and things like that. And, like, sometimes a person will beat you down so much, it'll, you'll learn a lot of stuff, too. Oh, yeah. Like, especially I, I, your fears. I tell people, kick me when I'm down, because you ain't going to do nothing to make me stronger when I stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that's exactly what I did. That, that's what I did. Like, 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 my last relationship, like, she kicked me down until, until I'm going to do two more feet just for measurement. And then I was like, okay, and then once you, once you, Going to marry you recognize like, I don't even recognize this person no more. That's great. Man, That's I said, great. I said, okay, you on the right path. I forgot. I was like, man, you forgot where you come from. Like you forgot where you come from. It, 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 it sounds very cliche as well, man. But you, you, you from Chicago, and like we get the worst, the, the worst rap for anything. Oh, absolutely. From Chicago, mm-hmm. And you yeah. have and, and, and Chicago people survive something a lot of other cities don't survive. Like we are almost worse than New York. And I'm not saying New York is bad, but I'm just saying we are almost worse. Like we, we survive killings. We survive it like hating everything. Yep. Everything. And you still here. Mm-hmm. You forget. Like you're you're leaving, you forget who you are, you have to come back so it can so you can be reminded. Mm, that wind blow different. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> that don't wind smell, blow no different. Nothing. I'm talking about got you got Woo! all this all this blowing. Got my skull blowing. Right. You know, you no feel, hell. feel it on the skull. skull. Yeah, yeah, the skull blowing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's okay, so let me ask you ask you, ask you a question, another question. Okay. What do you listen to as far as music? <laughs> who, who is on your Who is on your playlist to where you was like, oh man, I'm on my way to work, or I'm in traffic. I, I, I gotta listen. I gotta listen to some Tupac. So, um, so I gotta listen to Tupac. Somebody, Tupac. somebody get on my nerves. I got uh, my kids get on my nerves. Well, where's Tupac at? That's cute. I will tell you who my Pandora stations are because okay. I stopped buying music a long time ago. Okay. Um. So my my top played are Jay Z, mm. Ti, mm. um, Drake. Mm. Um, and then I got a lot of R&B, like a lot of old school mm-hmm. R&B. So Jagged Edge, 112, Jodis, you know, like all of that stuff. Um, I'm not a part of the Beehive, but I do love Beyonce. Um, so she is one of my stations too. So I'm like, um, and then I listen to a lot of gospel music too. So depending on the mood, right. um, if I'm not trying to go to jail, um, <laughs> and I don't want to kill anybody, I'm a 
take myself down the road of gospel music. And when I got to deal with pe- people, I typically go down that road too. Um, when I got a long drive and and I know I got the focus and I'm going to do my hip hop, I'm going to pick somebody from that list. Um, I just recently started re-listening to my uh, R&B stations because I had really got out of that because this stuff to come on the radio now, I just... It's not R&B. Man, it, I don't even listen to the radio anymore. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's not R&B. Every I, channel I, I play the same song. Yeah, I start, I start listening to it too. Like, like if, if, if I'm in the mood where... <laughs> Yeah, I'm rocking a jumpsuit today. Where my Tupac at? Right. <laughs> I am rocking a jump. I am rocking a jumpsuit today. I, I <laughs> today. definitely got a Tupac station. I don't know if I said that, but I do have a Tupac station. So, all of the people that would have, um, with the exception of Drake, because he would, he's this generation. But all of the people that were heavy hitters for our generation, uh-huh. I still rock with. Yeah, his music is very, very, very different. I'm not saying that we. You know, it's, I mean, some of the stuff I like. Yes. Like, it needs to be both. I can't tell you what it is because everybody got the same name and I don't really know what they be saying. Right. But, um, <laughs> uh-huh. little, little baby, the baby, little, big little baby. Little baby, whoever. Yeah, Damn. like, all of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know how to be going, do, 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 do. You said all of them. Yeah. But, man, that would sound like that, too. Can you just play the song? I, I got know teenagers. And my girls have opened me um have opened me up to like other genres of music because mm-hmm. we live out here, mm-hmm. um so which was intentional because I wanted them to grow up a little differently, um and it's a lot of people that I know don't ask me nobody name now but it's a lot of people <laughs> that I know because of them right. and they're like pop stars and stuff like that and yeah. I really dig the music now they 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 not stations on my Pandora but when I'm with my kids I. Yeah. Or I hear it on B ninety six or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I know this song and I'm singing along. <laughs> in the car. Like, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, 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 tell everyone how they can reach you um, as far as social media and things like that. You ain't got to grab it, your number out. Oh, okay. yeah. Don't do all that. You know, um, so, I came off of Twitter and Instagram. Okay. Um, but I am on Facebook. I am. Um, basically on all of the professional ones um with the exception of facebook because that can go out of the way but uh, (laughs) um i am on linkedin under my name katherine mcneil i am on facebook um at chbm services uh at a mother's love 31 days that's the book page now that page get it popping um i have a group for single moms um so i have the smn pce inc page that's for my not-for-profit and then spelled out is the group page um single mothers navigating parenting uh careers and entrepreneurship so that's there i feel like i'm forgetting something and then the l3c page um is at chbm services development programming but yeah i came off of ig i came off of twitter for what i do they just weren't conducive to that and Mm -hmm. it's it's a time waster for Mm -hmm. me so i came off of those um my YouTube channel, I just have it so I can put all my videos there, so I don't really promote it. So I have like fourteen followers. <laughs> but you can follow me on YouTube. Um, but every um, live event that I do, every workshop that I do, I always record it. Okay. And I and I put those on there, so you can always go back and like watch all of that stuff. Um, but the easiest way www.chbmservices.com and uh, www.smnpceinc.org. Dope, dope, dope. Now, it's, now, um, I'm actually like even even myself. I was thinking about like, um, you know how women be having like these expos and stuff. I want to do one just for men. Okay. You know, even even because I probably have to pick your brain about a couple of things. Um, even like with what you're doing, like as mm-hmm. far as like resumes, because like. I've seen some resumes. I'm like, hey, you, you, but they, they, they got a cousin that mm-hmm. went to junior college, um, mm-hmm. for like a semester, and it was cheaper than paying somebody to do yeah, it. Yeah, you know, it was mm-hmm. like I'm know, with it, and, and and just like and just like we were saying uh, before the interview, we were like, you know, it, it's 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 amazing how easy it is to start a business. Yeah, mm-hmm. and people, people like everyone is everyone has everyone is blessed with some sort of talent. Yeah. And you have to tap into your genius talent to to okay, oh, she opened the book out. <laughs> what is the title of this chapter? He reading the words. He ain't reading the title. No, no, no. I'm, I, I read oh, that yeah. too. I read that too, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got to get my own book. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Def, like, you were supposed to read the title out loud. Oh. But it's okay. <laughs> no, I can read out loud. Go ahead. It's what, fine. What, what, Look. Put that mug, mug back out. Okay. <laughs> Incorporate. That's it. Period. Mm-hmm. Period. And this chapter is a page because. One, I know people don't like parents don't have time, so none of my books are more than forty pages. That is intentional. Um, I put this in here because it is actually one of my seven tips. You have to have multiple streams of, of income, and it is mm-hmm. just that simple. P- people think that you have to have like live property. You don't have to do all that. You provide a a service. Just protect yourself and protect the people that you are um, servicing, and incorporate generate another stream yep. of income as a parent that is an absolute must, must. Uh-huh. And, and teach your children how to do the same thing. like we're gifted in generational poverty why are we not gifted with generational wealth and don't say nothing to me about the man not gonna let you girl it's all about <laughs> fear it's fear it ain't number fear and, 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 and this is exactly what I was telling you when we were outside I said I'm not scared of anything because I'm not scared. I'm, I'm going to do whatever I want, and no one's going to tell me. Like, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I'm just not. My mother, my mother is a hustler. Mm-hmm. And just watching her, it's like no one's going to tell me what I can't do. You know what I'm saying? It's easy. Oh, somebody's going to tell you. They're going to try but, to. But, 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 yeah. But, but, but what's going to happen is you're going to tell me I can't do something. Then I'm going to go home and I'm going to figure out how I can. Mm-hmm. Hence why and then nine times out of ten, I'm gonna bring it to three eight. No matter, no matter what yeah. it is, just because you told me it. I can't do it, right? Because a lot of people like some people need that though. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, a lot of people were, you know, like we were outside, we we're talking. I was like, a lot of people figure like, like you this and you that because you have a job while you have a business. No, that job is feeding My business. your business yep. until because eventually it may not, you know, because he was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm be working because you love to do it. I can't function so if not, I'm hungry, right? Like, if Girl. I'm starving and I can't take care of my kids, mm-hmm. how am I going to be creative? Mm-hmm. You can't. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, you gotta at some point, and do it all over. you got to have real conversations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes you no less passionate or no less dedicated because you still work. And of anything, you work twice as hard because you got to go give, you know, 40, 50 hours a week of your time to this person and then come home and put 160 hours into your own stuff. And be, tired, and be and exhausted, be a mama, worn out. A wife, but I tried right it. Now. Like that was one of the reasons why I got out of the not for profit sector. Because I'm trying to help everybody else and I'm starving to death. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to be any good to you if I can't take care of myself. Exactly. And that's the same way from a business standpoint. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's a different conversation for another show. And, 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 and this is, this is um, before we get out of here, y'all, this is, this is the one thing I just want to tell everyone. It's like, you know, like, you have to, and I, I know I say it jokingly, but you have to come off the porch and see that there is a, there is a stop sign. There is a stop sign. Mm-hmm. Is a, you have to come up out there, like, and you have to not be scared. See, a lot of us are scared. We are so busy worried about R. Kelly. We're so busy worried about all these things. It's, it's all these things about blocking this and doing this yep. and there, and we're not even worried about the gifts that we are, we, the gifts that we actually was born with. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like. I know it's a thousand people that look at our pages. Like, I, like I see you posting. I see you posting. I see you posting. And you may, may get maybe one like this, this, and that there, or whatever the case is. It's like this because no one wants to be there when the stuff first starts. But then mm-hmm. once they see you with a couple things, they see, oh. oh man, oh man, you got a picture with this person. We're oh, on the bandwagon. This person. Yeah, oh, 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 then your phone starts to ring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your phone starts to ring, and this is on the third, and it, so we have to get out of this. All this. Being scared about this is our third and and not being good enough to be this and not being good enough to that. Like trust me, for somebody who was homeless three years ago, trust me, I ain't scared of nothing. So nothing to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna go out and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do my thing, good, bad, or indifferent. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna do my thing and like I'm gonna try to put people in positions to where they can win. You so know? let's un- unpack that. Um, and I'm doing this intentionally. When you say that you're not scared of anything, is it truly an absence of fear or is it more so along the lines of you're not going to let that fear stop you? Mm-hmm. Both. Mm-hmm. It's both. Um, I, I, because at first, like, we were talking about relationships a little bit and I was thinking how people beat you down, people beat you mm-hmm. down. Okay, now I was in relationships to where I would say an idea 
no, 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 you can't do that. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I got this. Mm-hmm. But then in the back of my mind, it's still there. If you if you wake up every day and you're thinking about that one thing and you can't seem to shake it, that's what you need to be doing. That's oh, true. I, I, I don't care. I don't care what's going on. And, and like I said before, it's like your job is going to feed your dream. It's going to feed that because eventually, as you keep hustling, you keep being consistent. Like something's going like. Like it's only so many times like it's gonna be a no. Yep. It's only so many times like because sometimes so, your nose that would make you strong. Right. right. Because my father told me to talk me a long time ago. He was like, you know, it's hard for people to tell you no when they're in your face. It's like what you need to do is to get, to get your pinky toe in there, mm-hmm. and then eventually you'll be able to keep the door now. And these are things my mother and my father taught me, and I can't shake it. Like she was a business know. owner, my brother's a business business owner, my sister, mm-hmm. everybody. Mm-hmm. It's in the genes. Yeah. And 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 and, then, and my mom like she'll tell you she played played Miss Pac Man. We had our own store. Played Miss Pac Man doing her thing. This is what I grew up with. Yeah. She wasn't scared, and she didn't raise someone to be scared. And you know that the challenge will will be, it works in the reverse. When you're from the hood, and and all you see is the hood D boys and you know um, drug addicts as parents, and you know nobody finishes school. It's in your genes, mm-hmm. right? right? So that works on both sides. So I didn't grow up in a, in a family full of entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Um, I accidentally became an entrepreneur. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was off from maternity leave and I had the feeling that I was going to get laid off. And I was like, oh, I've been doing this for so long. Mm-hmm. I can get paid for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, I knew that doing resumes, it wasn't something that was going to you know, make me six figures, especially because I intentionally mm-hmm. underprice because I want us to be able to afford the services. I know, I know. What, what what resume writers charge. Mm-hmm. Um and you know that's fine if that's what you do, boo, but that ain't what I do. My my focus is to help us. So I am intentionally not expensive. I am extremely reasonable for the amount of work that I do. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but you're walking away with a document where you feel like you, you didn't pay several hundred dollars or, you know, oh, whatever the case may be. So I knew the sacrifice for me, though, was going to be, well, you ain't going to be in the house on, on the hill, you know, in the gated community or none of that doing this. So for, for me to get there, what else I got to do? Right. Everything that I do is community facing, but you better trust there's an end game here. Uh-huh. And that end game is going to do what I needed to do. And right. I'm going to still help the community. <laughs> I just want to piggyback back off of what you said because we out of time. Um, piggybacking off of you, I, there isn't many, if I know, I don't really know any that are entrepreneurs in my family. And I have a ginormous family. But, and I'm piggybacking off of you too and I want you to take this no type of way dark skin. Um, I love my toxic people. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> But um, milk chocolate. Okay, I know my levels of chocolate. I let you have your moment. You shine a little better when we put oil on you. I'm done. I'm done. But I know what I wanted to say is like being an entrepreneur and just stepping out in that field. A lot of us, and when I say us, I do mean our people. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're afraid of until it slaps us in the face. Oh, yeah. So I was just like you. I was like, I don't have a fear. Like, nothing fear, nothing scares me. I don't have a fear because I had already been through the things that scared me the most. Uh-huh. And when you are afraid of something and you aren't able to express it, um, you attract that fear. Right. That so when I got story. past those things, I was like, oh, I'm good. Come on. I'm ready for the world. But when I got into a complete entrepreneurship, independent business owner, you know, I did find my a fear. Is that there's a fear of failure. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And with that fear of failure, either you take it and you use it as a stepping stone to make you stronger, or you let it knock you down even more. And with that, I'ma say this. I was meditating last night, and during the meditation, a question was rise. Question your fears. Mm-hmm. Ask your fears. Why are you here? Because your fear is there for a purpose. Just like a good person is there for a purpose, your bad people are there for a purpose Absolutely. as well. So that's my little bit of my two cents. Well, my well, well, well I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't, and we'll get out of here. My thing was my the only fear that I had was when I was homeless and then my kids were asking why I was sleeping in the car. Oh yeah, that was I've been my through that fear. myself. I, and I told myself 
We was homeless. My kids ain't even know I was homeless. I was like, (laughs) never again. Because when you have your kids, it it hit different. Oh, Oh, yeah. It absolutely does. Yeah. Like, it's one thing your brother, your sister said, mama said. Mm -hmm. If mama, you get a little emotional because your mama said it. It's your mama. Yeah, but when your kids actually. When your kids say offspring. So wait, I said it's a so everything. Every, yeah, it's a different conversation. It's a different type of mindset. And I said never again. again, never again. And I told myself that. And I said I'm gonna build me. Everybody has businesses. So I said, Melvin, let's build an empire. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. because because if I could put people in a position where they can be successful, like you ain't gotta pay me all the money where because you being successful is my that, pay. That's my, my payment. That's my yeah. pay. Yeah. Yep. Because I'm because my blessings gonna come around naturally. Mm-hmm. naturally naturally so but thank you so much for coming around God, i really welcome. appreciate thank you, you got me i'm over here my feelings and stuff <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for coming i really 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 appreciate you thank you so much to my lovely lovely co-host miss shante y'all she, she, she got her hair laid her mane is hey it's it laid today i can say that because we finna get up out of here she ain't gonna even, ain't gonna even know what to say to me <laughs> yes, I so, yes i do her mane is laid today y'all laid looks yeah, like a perm the... and she got the lenny kravitz thing going on what? that's okay <laughs> Thank you so you much, know what? I can't. I really this phone appreciate and it. Phone Everyone in. be safe and tune Don't in be every sorry. Thursday to Fluent Radio at 4 30 p.m. to 5 30 p.m. I love everybody and be safe. Peace.